Kailash through the mystic eye is a virtual journey with Sadhguru through the mystical terrain of Nepal and Tibet. This week, we visit a few powerful places in the mountains of the north and plains of the south. Overwhelming experiences in certain places, especially Gupta Kashi and the Bowen. If I could explain what is the basis of these experiences. These are two different kind of spaces, Gupta Kashi and Tapovan. Tapovan maybe because of the altitude you felt lightheaded. <laughs> it's been a place which has been graced by many wonderful beings. Wherever they go, they leave their eggs. That's their way of life. If you leave your eggs in Bombay or in New York City or anywhere else, people will trample on it and go because they won't have the sense to recognize what's been left around. So the yogis also, people who have the privilege and the burden of carrying a dimension which is not in the experience of common people, also wherever they sit and stand, they lay their eggs. But why they always move to hilly regions, certain spaces which are identified as sacred, is simply so that these eggs are not trampled upon, but rather experienced, made use of, so that something will fly out of it. So they choose places. Tapovan has been one bird's nest where many, many yogis have chosen to lay their eggs. But the biggest pit of eggs is probably the Kedar. Kedar, every kind of bird lays it, laid it eggs, multicolored, and they gotten all mixed up. So, if you have been initiated in a certain way, you become open to a certain aspect of experience. There are so many other things there which you are not open to. But if you are initiated in a particular way, you become open to that particular dimension. The whole basis of creating temples in India is just this. A certain egg is laid and you are supposed to approach it in a certain way. For every deity, there is a certain type of approach so that you can experience that. Gupta Kashi, it's very much in the line of Agastya's way of doing things, which is pure Kriya, which is hundred percent energy work. No other things, no mantras, no tantras, no nothing. It's hundred percent energy work. That's the way I am, that's the only thing I know. I can just transform life from one dimension to another simply on the basis of energy. I don't know any chantings, I don't know any rituals, I don't know anything without any ritual. Simply, you know, just switching the energy from one dimension to another. Kashi is the holiest of holy cities, one of the most ancient cities of learning. This was a place where hundreds of enlightened being live, beings lived at a time. Every street you walked, you had an enlightened being to meet. So, it became a tradition in this culture, if you want to die, you must die in Kashi. If you die in Kashi, your liberation is guaranteed because there are so many enlightened ones, every day they come to have bath in the Ganga, all you have to do is just have a glimpse of them. And when they see that your time is near, definitely they will help you and you are through. So even today it is believed, when you come to a certain old age, people travel to Kashi, wait there to die. This tradition came simply because every generation saw hundreds of enlightened beings living in Kashi and it became the greatest core of learning. So Kashi means the holiest of the holy. So that is the main Kashi. What we went to yesterday, what we left today morning is Uttar Kashi. Uttar Kashi means the northern Kashi. 
what we went the other day, just after Kedar, is Gupta Kashi, the secret Kashi. Nobody is supposed to know about it. <laughs> All these Kashis have very powerful lingas, which are referred to as Jyotir lingas. They are self-created. They were not created by anybody, they are self-created. They grew out of the earth in the form of a linga. People recognized it and worked upon it to make it into something else.